this was supposed to be all about software in the loop with traditional helicopters but I got distracted and it's about a NASA M2 F1 lifting body instead. <laughs> Louis keeps mentioning some great traditional helicopter setup videos that are now on the RG Pilot YouTube channel and last week this video came along from Swiss Drone. Makes you want one doesn't it and an excuse I can put one into Air Autonomous and I can have a few goes at this uh, drone delivery pad that I'm putting in our confined area that we've got here in the garden but I can't get it to work couldn't get it to work had it, I'll, I'll keep trying I'm sure I'll get it working in X-Plane had a look around found some great aeroplanes in V-Sky Labs so why not seven years earlier the first full-scale flight test model crawled literally as an automobile towed it aloft at the end of a cable simple in construction and low in cost it nevertheless did what the wind tunnel tests had said it would. It flew. Now it was time to walk. The DC-3 towed the lightweight steel and plywood lifting body and its pilot to altitudes up to 12,000 feet. There it was released and allowed to glide in free flight to the desert floor to land at a speed of 80 miles per hour. vehicle logged over 400 successful flights so here we are then the v sky labs version of it what a fantastic model it is too i don't have a dakota well i could have could have got it towed up but i didn't have time late last night when i was playing with this so i thought let's just drop it from a b52 so we're at RAF boscombe oh, and this is also a chance to play with q ground control i haven't played with it much so what I did was I had Software in the Loop running on Mission Planner and then I piped Mavlink to, uh, to Q Ground Control. So here we go, then eyes down for a full house, we're already in auto. Let's drop it from the B-52 and um, there we, there's the drop, you see it goes nuts. Uh, memory serves, we're at 45,000 feet. Little generated route just to lose that altitude. Uh, so after the first point, if you are ex-army or military in fact you'll probably notice that this is that's where all the big training areas are in the uk now Q, Q ground control i don't really know i have never used it in anger um so this is also for me to play around with it and, and get the hang of it i a bit weird that that sliding window that goes by obviously i've not set that up correctly i would rather all that flight information stayed in that window rather than going from the selections but that's probably something I did in the settings. Now, I've had a total of five flights uh, with this uh, particular model in Sittl. I did two before this just to get the speeds right, or fairly right. No water tune, nothing like that. This is straight out of the box. You can also see why I don't have scenery. So, RG Plane's doing a marvellous job of flying it, really. I think I'm going a tad too fast, uh, but I, again, I'm not spending my whole life sorting this out. Uh, you'll see in the V Sky Lab instructions, I say if you go too quick, you have, have problems with the roll, and you can perhaps see it. There we are, it's a little bit wobbly, but good enough for government work, as they say. So, I'd better put some music under this because this is dull as dishwater, isn't it, really? Sing amongst yourselves. Off we go to. Uh, the second waypoint and then, then the third waypoint what I wanted it to do and I've forgotten the name of the instruction now was to spiral down descend down and uh, head off towards the airfield again um, once that, that descent to 10,000 feet had happened uh, the airfield at Boscombe Down home of the Empire Test Pilot School uh, where lots and lots of fabulous experimental flying happens and a 10,000 foot runway. I'm not sure, I think it might be run by the Kinetic people now um, in modern civil times. And Kinetic are the people, of course, responsible um, for the Zephyr, uh, the, the uh, record-breaking, flew for two weeks in 2010, and I think they've gone for longer since then. Absolutely smashed all the records. 
So where are we in Wiltshire, I think? Yes, that'll be Andover, which way we're looking. Yeah, that's Andover just in front of us, I think. Get that right. I think it is. And then somewhere behind us will be Stonehenge. That's, yes, there's that roundabout that uh, you get stuck out on the A303. There's my high speed two wobble. And Stonehenge, yes, it's up at the back of the aircraft there. So if you have a visit to Stonehenge, you, you might not have realised that one of the biggest UK military airfields is right next to it. Say 10,000 foot runway, so this thing should be able to stop on that. If we get close. So we started at 45,000 feet. We're, all, <laughs> we're coming down at a heck of a lick, as you can see. We're going to enter an orbit there and then uh, head out uh, for our landing so let's see if that works so two tuning flights and then this or two see if it works flights and then um, then this also flight so I don't actually know what's going to happen and as ever I don't read the manual reading the manual is for sissies now I, I never read the manuals because most users don't so I don't know what the command I put in is going to do remember in the background uh, here we go here's the turn yep um in the background this is running on mission planet and being piped through to um to q ground control that's that let me look at my keyboard here control f function and then it's got that again i can't remember what the wording is but it it's forwarding mavlink basically round and round and round we go have we got the radius of this turn um probably too small actually this aeroplane uh, so it's probably going to spiral to that point there's the runway you eventually want to land up so you're way too high at the minute well I say way too high but this thing does fall like a rock the actual aircraft's got uh, rocket assist <laughs> for just before you hit touchdown but um, I haven't bothered learning how to fire that so you fire a Jato, which <laughs> which slows it down somewhat. So it should be quite spectacular at the bottom of this. So there's no remember there's no wing on this. It's just a lifting body. Well, a stopping you falling quite so fast body. And of course, they, it was developed for space. Uh, it was developed as a way of getting astronauts back from the Apollo program. And this one was built for thirty thousand dollars, which was amazing at the time. They said. It was built by NASA engineers. Uh, it started as a concept dropped from a model aeroplane. I couldn't find any video of that. And then they, they scaled it up, per se, for $30,000. Built at the back of a, um, a hangar behind a, a bit of tarpaulin. And uh, they made, I can't remember the name, I should, have, I should have written some notes. But there was a reference made to the Wright Brothers. It was something, someone's bicycle shop, the engineer's bicycle shop. Right. What's happening? Right, we've bust our altitude. So what you haven't seen in the background is in Mavlink. I have asked it to proceed to the next waypoint. <laughs> I've, I've, I've jumped that bit. I'm going to have to check how those that, that parameter actually works. There we go then. Not quite on the center line on the glide path, but we're heading the right way. The crash might be closer to the vehicle, so if we keep going like this. And maybe a little jiggly and wiggly, because I probably am flying just a little bit too fast, but again, I'm not gonna bother changing anything in this just for the just for mucking about in simulation. It just blows my mind that our due plane out of the box will have a good bash at flying just about anything. It sort of shows, it, to my mind anyway, that you don't need to fiddle around too much with PID settings. You might only make things worse. Uh, maybe I will do an auto tune of this, but I, I don't think so. Whoosh. And if you're thinking it looks a bit like uh, the six million dollar man, the later version of this is the thing that crashed and was the thing at the beginning of the six million dollar man. For younger people, they won't know what I'm talking about. Because I came, uh, I jumped the waypoint, I was 
I wasn't I wasn't as lined up as I would have hoped to have been. Uh, but it should turn um, towards the runway a little bit more shortly. Uh, interesting that APM, uh, sorry, Q ground control doesn't follow the uh, follow the aircraft again. That's probably a setting I need to do. Certainly looked good. Very good, in fact. But I would like that for more flight data there all the time. Again, another setting. We're not going to make it, are we? And this is us. Not making it. <laughs> Will we roll onto the airfield? So obviously I've flown that and seen that before and I must admit I thought I was missing a lot of the picture with Q ground control or certainly missing a lot of what I'm used to so I very quickly last night uh, cobbled the f just just changed a couple of parameters and had a look at that that uh, loiter to um, to an altitude setting yeah there we are we're just off the runway and um, and had another go, um, just flying it just in mission planner, and to see if to see if it make makes any difference to me. So here we go again. Get up in that B fifty two, and away we go. Uh, for some reason, my other screen recording software didn't do a very good job of it, and I've sped this up because we've seen this flight before. It's very very similar. It's just going to whistle on down. Uh, but what I did discover was that there was an exit uh, altitude on that loiter to altitude command and that's what I hadn't put in before so I put that in this time let's see it's stalling that was the um, you could briefly see the tank tracks and so I was replaying there it's actually a really good uh, wildlife conservation area because no one's been there since the First World War other than the shells and things. And they're only in, in various impact areas. Down we go. Passing 20k. Made that radius uh, 750 metres or 750, yeah, 750 metres. And that seems to be holding that a lot, lot better. And if memory serves, I thought I'd give myself a bit more altitude now and made it 12,000 feet for the uh, departure. So descend down to 12,000 feet, then turn onto a heading, which uh, was Rama heading 230, and uh, home in time for tier medals, we hope. So there's 11 gone, and now it's triggered took a little bit past that worried me that did uh, I don't quite know why again probably a setting I've not set up so we're much 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 higher this time and we'll turn back into the approach very shortly now <laughs> yeah you see we're very very high over the airfield Tom Pittinger no doubt will send me an angry email and to explain all the things I didn't set up correctly um, but that's all part of the game for me now. I promise I'll get the helicopter thing working. I want to get the helicopter thing working. I've had a day, uh, two telephone calls today that have involved helicopters. Uh, so something is trying to tell me something. And uh, so I must get into them. Now, harness is tight and locked. Here we go then. Welcome to Boscombe. 